NASCAR's new TV deal will begin earlier than expected. And let's wrap up this week with some good old fashioned charter and silly season rumors. <laughs> How's it going, y'all? My name is Eric. Welcome to Out of the Groove. Happy Friday. We'll react to and analyze the latest NASCAR news in just a moment. But first, my friends at Faction 46 and Petty's Garage have something pretty cool to announce that you can be a part of. How's it going, y'all? Eric here with Faction 46 driver Thad Moffat. And Thad, I believe you have something very exciting to announce here today. Yeah, that is right, I do. So I'm announcing that we're gonna run this paint scheme at Darlington and you guys can be a part of it. This is a Bobby Hamilton 25th anniversary. Uh, wow. This is the original die cast. Here's the t-shirt to go with it that you guys can own. Pretty good looking t-shirt, right? Awesome. Yeah. Did you bring my size? Yeah, so we put the Petty 75 in place of the STP logos. Uh, so it's got the cool family tie. They ran five different schemes that year to celebrate STP being with the Petty family for 25 years. So uh, it's pretty cool uh, for me to get the honor to run that at Darlington this year. And uh, it's really cool that the fans can be a part of it. Yeah. So we're selling names on the deck lid of the truck. Oh, nice. Um, you can get a 164 or a 124 die cast. Wow. And this super awesome t-shirt. And all these packages are available on dailydownforce.com. Even if you don't get the die cast, you can still get your name on the deck lid and be part of it and ride with me at Darlington. So uh, really cool for the fans to get to interact and really cool to have the Petty 75 on this neat of a car. That's gonna look awesome. The silver's gonna look great on the truck and even better, the truck bed, a lot bigger than those old deck lids are. So yeah. a lot more room for a lot more fans to ride with you at Darlington, that's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. And what better place to do it than Darlington, right? That's gonna be awesome. We can't wait to see it. Darlington Raceway just next month. The top link in the description below will take you where you need to go to check out all the die cast shirt and other options. Happy to work with Thad and my friends at Faction to announce this cool deal. A lot of Petty content on the channel this week. We had Kyle Petty on earlier in the week, now working with Thad and Petty 75th. Just a coincidence. Let's get to the latest news. A huge announcement yesterday. The CW will begin broadcasting the Xfinity series a year early. It was confirmed yesterday that the CW will broadcast the final eight Xfinity series races this season, taking over for NBC slash USA Network a bit early. Their coverage will begin with the regular season finale at Bristol Motor Speedway and will continue for the seven playoff races that follow. Now, while the broadcast will air on the CW, they will still be produced by NBC Sports. Rick Allen, Steve Letarte, and Jeff Burton will be in the booth. Dennis Miller, president of the CW, said, quote, we can't wait to give racing fans an early preview of all the exciting action the NASCAR Xfinity Series has to offer on the CW, and we look forward to establishing the network as a new destination for live motorsports. This move has also led to the start time changing for many of these races. Pull out your calendars, get ready to make some edits. Kansas, Charlotte, Homestead and Martinsville, their start times have now been pushed to 4 p.m. Eastern time, while the Las Vegas playoff race will now be a night race, and even the Phoenix finale has been pushed back about an hour. So take note of all those changing start times, especially if you're planning on attending any of those races. Uh, what does this mean, I guess, for the average NASCAR TV viewer? The CW is a broadcast channel, meaning you typically don't need a cable subscription to view it. I highly suggest right now checking out your TV TV guide, whatever service you use, figure out which channel the CW is on, bookmark it for later in the year. Being on broadcast television should result in larger viewership for the Xfinity series, which I'm sure for many of the team owners over there is very exciting. And I think it's encouraging that one of NASCAR's newest broadcast partners is so enthusiastic about the series. They want to get in early. The CW must have struck some sort of deal with NBC. I imagine some amount of money had to have changed hands, I imagine. The CW is excited about NASCAR. This is a great way to warm up fans to this new channel, get them used to the CW so that when their $115 million deal kicks off in February, fans are ready to go. Big move by the CW, and it's the latest in a series of kind of odd moves by NBC. 
NBC is voluntarily ending their Xfinity series contract a few months early. I guess NBC is already on the way out, at least when it comes to the Xfinity series, so why not focus your attention elsewhere? I believe NBC has a contract with the Big Ten to broadcast college football games this fall. I know these major college football conferences are expanding, the playoffs are expanding, the college football fans in my life that I talk to are both very excited and also very anxious about this upcoming season, so regardless, I'm sure ratings will be huge. NBC wanting to shift their Saturday focus to one of their new partners makes a ton of sense. This move also, to me at least, validates the rumors that Xfinity is bowing out of the series. Not the sport entirely, but I would be surprised if Xfinity is still the title sponsor of the secondary series next year. Xfinity and NBC are both owned by Comcast. Again, if Comcast already knows the Xfinity branding is going away, way, why not work out a deal with the CW, free up some space so you can dedicate more of your focus to the Big Ten. I can make sense of these moves, but I can't quite make sense of other recent NBC moves, like replacing Rick Allen with Lee Diffie midway through the season. Remember, uh, Lee Diffie is expected to take over lead play-by-play duties for the Cup Series sometime after this summer's Olympic break. And it's also odd that Dale Earnhardt Jr. is no longer with NBC. Though, to be fair, it's tough when you're bidding against Amazon. As odd as NBC has been acting recently, I'm equally excited about the CW's enthusiasm. This year will still largely be NBC Productions just with the CW logo slapped on it, but going into next year, I can't wait to see what the CW does to promote one of their new major sports properties. Could be a great opportunity for the Xfinity Series. I talked to the Xfinity Series team owner Tommy Joe Martins recently. He has high expectations for the CW. It's exciting that the Xfinity Series will have their own dedicated channel and broadcast partner. Hopefully they'll have their own dedicated booth, their own dedicated analysis. You know, I love seeing cup drivers call Xfinity Series races, but like at Martinsville this last weekend, Cindric, Blaney, they don't really know the storylines. They don't follow the series closely week after week. They're just plug and play. The Xfinity Series broadcasts right now are not as good as they could be. Hopefully the CW is a breath of fresh air. Now, earlier this week on Power Hour, my podcast with Brennan Poole, we discussed recent Cup Series charter rumors. And Brennan, who, while he races in the Xfinity Series, is very plugged into the NASCAR garage, made a very interesting prediction. How likely do you think it is that it, that Stuart Haas would look to sell, and how hungry are some of these teams out there to I don't, add to their portfolio? Yeah, I mean, uh, you definitely hear a lot of stuff in the garage. I think I definitely know some things that I, I probably shouldn't know, but that I do know. But I mean, I, you know, I, I don't. You don't have to I give a specific. Do have you heard? <laughs> ha, do you like? Do you think there's a big deal coming later this year? You don't have to go into any specifics. Oh, uh, I think there'll probably be a couple by the end of the year Ooh, that okay. uh, will come out. Hmm. Now, last week, Sports Business Journal reported that Trackhouse, 2311 Racing, Legacy Motor Club, and Junior Motorsports are among the teams most interested in buying a charter or charters. Those are all Chevy and Toyota teams, which surprised me a bit. I'm surprised no Ford teams are being mentioned, specifically RFK, or heck, even maybe Front Row. There was a rumor earlier this week that Stuart Haas Racing had already lost their key partner status with Ford. Chase Briscoe came out and refuted this. But going into next year, there are still serious questions regarding SHR's future. Will they still be a key partner team? Will they even still be a Ford team? Let's do some basic math for a moment. Right now, with Gibbs, 2311, Legacy Motor Club, there are eight. Eight chartered Toyota entries in the NASCAR Cup Series. Chevy, between Hendrick, Trackhouse, and RCR, also eight. Right now, with Front Row Motorsports in play, Ford has, I think, 11? 12 if you count the Wood Brothers, though I'm not sure they technically count. I don't know. Let's say 11. If Stuart Haas Racing and Ford split... That number, though, will go down to seven. And if Trackhouse 2311, one of these other teams buy a charter, suddenly Chevy and Toyota's numbers are going up and Ford will be left behind. That's why I'm at least a little surprised there's not more chatter about RFK, front row. I mean, Brad Keselowski in January said the top of his to-do list is to get a third charter and start a third full-time team. 
I still believe the two teams most likely to sell charters this year are Stuart Haas Racing and Colleague. Talking about Colleague Racing specifically, we had Justin Haley, former Colleague driver on Power Hour this week, and he told us that he felt he had a longer runway with Rick Ware than if he had tried to stay at Colleague. I was at a point where I felt like I just kind of plateaued um, to a point with respect. Um, I don't feel like there was a clear path to winning races um, where I was competitively weekly winning races. Um, and obviously you, you sign with RWR and, and I mean, that's not kind of your forward thinking thing is to go out there and win races. But um, I do feel like my runway is longer here. I feel like there's more opportunities down the line. And This is just my you know semi-educated guess, but I believe Colleague Racing will sell at least one of their two charters, if not both. I know during the offseason, Chris Rice said, hey, we're not looking to sell, but I just think there are too many sharks in the water. You could get millions, tens of millions for those charters. Shoot, you might even be able to sell both for a hundred million, nine figures. That is serious cash. And with it, Call of Racing could go back to being a powerhouse in the Xfinity series. Let's just be honest. I think Justin Haley was being kind to Call of Racing, saying, you know, they'd plateaued. I think Colleague's Cup team is over the hill. You look at owner's points right now, they're 30th and 31st. Not great, and not showing any signs of getting better. They benched their best Cup Series driver this year because of funding issues. So that's just my early prediction. You know, Stuart Haas, if they lose key status with Ford, they'll for sure sell at least one charter, I believe. And keep an eye on Colleague Racing. I would be shocked if they don't sell at least one charter. Just my prediction, just throwing it out there. I want to hear your predictions down in the comment section below. It'll be fun to revisit this video maybe in a couple months, a few months later in the year. Thank you all so much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. Also, while you're down there, check out that Faction 46 Petty 75th offer. Check out the latest episode of Power Hour. You can hear more from Brennan, more from Justin Haley. And as always, a huge thank you to my very generous Patreon supporters. I got to get going. Going to head over to a Texas Motor Speedway this afternoon. I will be there all weekend long. Should be a good time. Hope to see some fans out there. Have a wonderful rest of your Friday, folks, and have a wonderful Texas Motor Speedway weekend.